Meanwhile, children's hospitals across Canada are reporting more kids, even newborns, being admitted for COVID as Omicron continues to spread rapidly, leaving no age group untouched. So there are a lot of growing concerns about how severely this variant is affecting kids and what those symptoms even look like. For more now, I'm joined by pediatric infectious diseases specialist, Dr. Fatima Kakar, joining us in Montreal this morning. Hello, doctor. Thank you so much for joining today. Good morning. Um, so let's begin here with the current state of what you are seeing. You work out of Montreal's St. Justine Hospital. What are you seeing with younger patients? So we're definitely seeing an increase in hospitalizations. Uh, we're about two to three times where we were exactly this time last year. But it's really a reflection of how many cases we're seeing overall in the community. So only a small portion of kids with COVID are hospitalized. But because there are so many kids overall getting COVID, we're seeing rising numbers of hospitalizations. Okay, so how is this variant, uh, Omicron, uh, affecting, say, um, symptoms? You know, it, it seems like it's affecting people differently at different ages, but are you seeing any specific trends with the younger population? Sure. So I think the first thing to remember is that it's still not very severe in children. So I don't want people to get the impression that we're changing the severity of disease. It's really a small proportion of children. And some of those hospitalizations we're seeing are not due to COVID. So I'd say about two thirds are for COVID, but another third are just screening positive on admission for other reasons. For example, a child has a broken arm, we're testing on admission and we're finding COVID. What we've seen different so far from Omicron as opposed to the previous variants is that Omicron seems to be much more respiratory, so causing nasal congestion, cold-like symptoms, whereas previously COVID was fever, maybe some GI symptoms in children. And so because children generally do okay. worse with colds, we're seeing more complications from colds in these kids. I see. Um, thank you for clarifying that, because there are a lot of parents watching right now and saying, do I need to be even more worried with this variant or should we continue to do what we've been doing with regards to masking and isolation? What is your advice to parents who are watching right now when it comes to those who qualify for vaccinations and what they should be doing on a daily basis to protect themselves? Absolutely. So again, no panic, but I do encourage vaccination and all those who are eligible. And I say this because about only half of school age children eligible are vaccinated. And it's one of the best ways to prevent severity of disease. And for parents of kids with underlying conditions, especially lung conditions, um, asthma, chronic lung disease, all extra important. And then the other group to be really cautious about are newborns. So they are getting sicker and they do have a more fragile immune system. So it's really important to protect newborns from people who have COVID and if possible from moms to get vaccinated during pregnancy and during breastfeeding, which is going to protect their newborns. That was actually my next question. Um, you know, I, I'm on a number of mom Facebook groups and whatnot, and there are ongoing conversations about how safe it is for a new mom or a mom who is pregnant at, at what stage in their pregnancy, if it is safe. So you say, yes, do it. Absolutely. So we have really great data from Canada and across the world to show that the vaccine is safe in pregnancy. And we also know that having COVID in pregnancy increases your risk of having a severe outcome, both for you and your baby. So we encourage vaccination during pregnancy. But at the same time, I know there are so many people hesitant still with all of this data. And so if you're really hesitant, I still urge you to get the vaccine right after delivery because there is protection that happens during the breastfeeding period. I just, I've encountered so many newborns whose moms wanted to get vaccinated after delivery, but it becomes complicated. It's hard to get an appointment. There's a lot of logistical issues. So try to get that vaccine shot before you go home from hospital. And um, if you don't want to get it during pregnancy, because that's just an extra way we can protect these newborns. Some really great information here, Dr. Fatima Kakar. Appreciate you taking the time with us today. And uh, if anyone has missed this interview, we're going to post that one on our website because um, there's a lot of important data here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Melanie.